Okay. But then when I would seek certain things and get what I wanted, then that wasn't what I wanted. So it was a, it's a lot of reasons. And now I've become so busy. My life has become extremely busy. And mm -hmm. so it's been kind of hard getting out, mixing and mingling. And then with the pandemic, it has made it worse. But before then, it, you know. But yeah. I think, and there are several other reasons that I probably, that I can't think of off the top of my head. But <laughs> <laughs> I get it. I get it. And I'm sure it's a lot of women who are watching like you, you know, you raise your kids, you like, you got a routine going, you got everything popping the way it pops. It's been popping that way for a long time. So it's like, if I bring somebody else in, it's going to be a little different. So um, I like that. Kim, Kim, look, look I'm like, the, uh, Kimberly Lake, <laughs> what is your take on that? Why are you not, in your mind side, why do you, why are you not married? I think for me, it's just a tad bit different. I think it's just a time mm -hmm. issue with me. I think um, the goals that I have and the, I believe the purpose God gave me, it would have been hard mm -hmm. to kind of pursue it, married and with children, being with somebody. Right. So looking back, I really think it's a timing issue and not like, because, you know, you know, sometimes you think like, is something wrong with me? Like, what's going on? Because, you know, you do want to get married. Mm -hmm. But um, for me, I just really think it was a timing issue. That makes sense. I can agree with that. And while we're talking about that, I know, um, and this is just from my own standpoint, with our culture, sometimes as we get older, uh, it's kind of, I can tell when I was in my 20s and I when people would ask me, oh, you're single, they'd be like, oh, girl, that's right, you travel, you do whatever you want to do. Then when you get in your 30s, they're like, okay, well, you know, God's going to send you somebody, it's working okay. Then late, 30s, early 40s, it's like, so what's going on? It's almost like they want to say, what's wrong with you? They, they say it in different ways, but it's like, and the thing about it, as a woman, they say that to me, but my brother, who is a year and nine months away from me in age, he's single, no children. And when people find that out, they start dapping him up. They like, it's almost like he escaped from getting married. <laughs> Everybody's so cool with it. Nobody says anything to him. So in our culture, do you all feel pressure um, about marriage? Like what I, the looks and how people will say, and of course you can't always go off of what people say, but do you feel any kind of pressure? And I'll start with you, Kim Lake, about that. Do you feel any kind of culture pressure or family pressure? Yes, there's tons of pressure, like what you said, like, to piggyback off what you said. Um, there is a lot of pressure for women to be married because in our culture, our value is tied to a man or being married so like it's like mm -hmm. being chosen or picked it's like your value is a lot so when you're not married like i can relate to that like you know in your late 20s people are like okay then you get 30s people are like okay you're not married and then like mid and 30s and up it's like okay like what's wrong with you kind of thing so i really mm -hmm. think that our culture pressures us and tells us as women um, that we need to be married and that's like the ultimate goal and that's where our true value right. is. So I think it's very, very true. Very sad, but very true. It is. It really is. What about you, Kimberly Grayson? What do you feel about that? How, how Do you feel any pressure or are you just like, whatever? <laughs> well, <laughs> I used to feel pressure um, because like both of you said, the culture is that, especially in church, it's like if you're not married, something is wrong with you. Or and then every married, but well not every, but all the married women think you want their husbands, right? And so there's that's a different type <laughs> because if I don't get married, you know, I'm gonna be known as the church slut, or you know, I, I, you're laughing, but I'm very serious. You know it. I know you're serious. I know so, you're serious. So, I used to feel that pressure. But now I'm at a point where if I'm comfortable with who I am, would I like to get married one day? Of course. But if I don't, I'll be okay. You know, I'm right. good if I don't. Um, mm -hmm. If you got a problem with me being single, that's your problem, not mine. Right. So I've gotten to the point that I don't let it bother me anymore. I want you to talk to us about what your experience is like as a millennial 
in the entertainment industry. I will honestly say that my gender probably played more of a factor than my age did. She's a female, so she probably don't really know or she probably can't really. And so then they would just write me off. But we got that together. <laughs>
I don't feel like it's stickiness, but y'all know me, so y'all might feel that way too. But anyway, so two of you all, what do you all feel about picky and standards? Um, whichever one wants to go first. Well, I'll say there is a difference between being picky and being standard. And I'll just take some of my issues. Requiring a, <laughs> I already know, know this is going to be funny. You know when, I, when I go on a first day, the first day question is, do you believe in Jesus Christ? If your answer is no, that's the end of it. That's a standard. But if I go on a first day and I don't like the way your clothes fit you, that's picky. <laughs> your swag ain't on 10. Uh, well, and your swag ain't on 10,000. That's picky. Standards are things, to me, are things that should be embedded in a person. When you choose, you, am I making sense? No, you uh, make to sense. To me, a standard is something that I, record, that I want in a person that's already in them. Not mm -hmm. something that I can mm -hmm. groom them for. To me, right. picky issues are things that I could possibly groom you for. That's my version of it. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. What about you, Kim Lake? <laughs> yeah, so I agree with Kim. I think um, when you have standards, I, I say that's like a non-negotiable. So like I'm a Christian, so I need to be with somebody that's a Christian. I um, want to have children, so I need to be with somebody that, has, that wants to have children. I should say, excuse me, there's certain standards that you have that you shouldn't like give up on because they're like true to you. But as she said, there's picky because like I have literally had conversations with women where I'll be like so they'll like for height for instance they're stuck on a specific height so like I said so if a guy is everything you want and he ain't six three he's five ten like would you talk to him and it's like well he ain't everything I want then so I'm like okay like stuff like that like <laughs> that's being picky to me um so and I think like um like she was saying about the clothes or like Steve Harvey or Russell's Russell Wilson, like pre their wives, like their fashion just wasn't all right. Pre. But Marjorie and Sierra, like, you know, got them together. So I think as long as you have those core values and things that you really need in a um a partner there, then the other things can be like changed, you know. So you ain't gotta be picky. Just keep your standards and then you know what can be changed. You can work on like a house, you know, have a little fixer upper. So Yeah. Yeah. As long as you got that good foundation. That's what we're looking for. The foundation got to be, you know, you don't want nobody to, you just got to have the core values got to be good. And, you know, you can change out a window or, a, a, you know, a, the uh, shrubbery or something. If you clean enough, you can do that. But we can't be repaving a, a whole driveway and digging up and all that. No, no, no. But, yeah, thank y'all for that. The next thing I want to ask, I know the two of you have different personalities. Kim. Grayson is more of an extrovert, in my opinion. She She's kind of an uh, introvert, extrovert, depending on who she's with. But the way she's out all the time, she's an extrovert. <laughs> and Kim Lake is more of an introvert. So I know with your personalities, and I'm going to start with this with Kim Grayson. She'll call me and say, hey, we going and we doing this and we doing that. Da, 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 da. How do you remain out and open, um, say it? like going out and doing things when you get into a routine? I know you talk about being busy. Because I am very, very busy. I consider myself an excellent manager of my time. So just being transparent, I schedule it in my calendar. Even like getting out by myself, going places to have dinner, you know, just to sit at the bar, at the sports bar, at the bar and see, you know, I put it on my calendar because if it's not on my calendar, it won't happen. So even when I'm hanging out with friends, whatever the schedule is, I have to put it on my calendar so that, and if it's on there, I'm going to do it. And I have, sometimes I've been known to have to force myself to get out because um, my day starts at 5 a.m. And by 7 p.m., you really, I've been running since 5 a.m. You really want me to take a shower and put on clothes and right and go somewhere. But it's like, this is what you have to do, you know, in order to 
be sociable so that and living alone also you know you don't want to be in the house by yourself all the time because then you start talking to people that are not there <laughs> so but <laughs> <that's definitely my laughs> I just put it on my phone. I got you. <laughs> Makes sense. A lot of sense. I need to start doing that. Just putting it on the calendar. What about you, Kim? I know with you being an introvert, how do you? And we have a lot of people who watch, who might be watching now, and it's like, I don't want to go out. I don't want to meet nobody, but I do want to be married. I do want to date somebody. I do want to do something. Is there something that you do um, to kind of combat that with your personality? Yes. Well. Look, I'm going to talk to my introverts out there. You know, when you're an introvert, people like to make you feel like something is wrong with you. But there's nothing wrong with you. That's just your personality, how God made you. So, like, you should work with the strength of your um, introvertness, if that's a word. So, we thrive one-on-one -on -one, um, in intimate and small group settings. So, like, when I moved, for instance, to Nashville, I did not know anybody in Nashville. I downloaded an app called Meetup. And on Meetup, there is, like, anything you have an interest in there's like a group for it so whatever i was interested in from from books to restaurants to outdoor things like i looked up those small groups you know it might be coffee shops small group settings small groups anything that's smaller intimate we're just more comfortable in and it doesn't drain us um with that and also online dating i mean now we're in the social media age um like steve look i keep quotes saying steve harvey but he be talking all the time so steve harvey talks about <laughs> you know you can just put up a profile and guys will come to your uh message you or dm you or try to call you and that's true like you can literally throw up a profile and you'll get um interaction that way so i think looking at small group activities and things that are online with your interests because when we're interested interested in something that's when we come out the most so um i think looking at mm -hmm. those two things will help you being an introvert well we it would sound like we got us two dating coaches on here today y'all they yeah. told us how to get <laughs> If you want to go out, follow Kim Grayson. You want to be an introvert. Look, y'all need to start a little business. You'll get everybody popping, on and popping. <laughs> but I'm so grateful that you all were able to come. Anything you want to say to anybody that's single, any single female? Um, and I'll start with you, Kim. Like, any encouraging words that you want to give to somebody today about being single? Well, um, being single is not a curse. Um, you are whole. You are a complete person on your own. So being with somebody doesn't add value to you. You are born with that value. You have it. Can't any nothing can take it away. So just continue to live your life, find your purpose, work on yourself. And I believe when it's the right time, you know, you'll cross paths with who you want to be with um, and who you desire to be with if that's what you want to do. And if you want to stay single, that's cool too. You know, we all have different paths. So just find your path live it and just trust God to do the rest. Amen. Amen. What about you, Kim Grayson? Well, I will say always, always, always remember no matter who you meet, who they are, where you meet them, you are enough for every situation. You are enough to be a wife. You are enough to be a girlfriend. You are enough to do whatever, go wherever and accomplish whatever you want. So don't allow other people in their circumstances to determine who you are and where you're going. Don't settle because you are enough to get whatever it is you want. Do not settle just because you don't want to be alone. And wow, that's, that's good. <laughs> She said, and that's that on that. <laughs> Very good. I love it. I love it. I love it. But thank you guys for both being on the pink table. Y'all have to really come back for real because I feel like we kind of scratched the surface, but we really didn't dig in there where we really, 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 you know, but we'll, we'll do that at another time. But Kim Grayson, thank you for being on. Kim Lake, thank you both for coming. I appreciate it. Make sure that you share this video with your friend. They just spent some good wisdom to us, ladies. All right. Love you guys. Thank y'all for being here. And we'll see you next time. All right. Bye. Thank you. <laughs>
every couple argues, fights, there has disagreements. But that disagreement does not give you the license to kill. Let's be real. We're angry for so long about something, whatever it is, and we're just waiting on that moment to be able to pull it out and shoot. When you know your spouse so well, you know where the kill shot is.